And I'm really excited to participate in, in your uh, brain launch event and to see the, the uh, analogy you've made to the moonshot because the space program is very uh, central to our family. My dad spent his career with Rockwell and got started, he, I think he started work in 1961 or something, and uh, the Apollo program was in full steam, and then that transitioned into the space shuttle program, and that transitioned into aerospace work with the government, um, making um, various aerospace systems, commercial and defense. And so why is that important? I mean, we have a, a real interest as a family in seeing Orange County reach its potential. And we are strongly, um, of the belief that for Orange County to reach its potential, UCI needs to be at the center of that. Uh, my dad went to San Jose State, I'm a UCLA Bruin, my dad, or my brother's a, a Cal Bear, so we're, we're related to UCI tangentially, but we're just very focused on how can Orange County reach its potential? My background is in the real estate business, and 30 years ago, if you looked around the county, you'd say, gosh, you know, Orange County is a real estate-driven economy. You looked at the Irvine Company and, and several other handful of developers that created a, a strong business in that. But today, when you look around, it's not that way at all. Largest public company in Orange County is Edwards Life Sciences. You look at Allergan, you look at these life science, medical device, and med tech companies that have become the real core of what the county is and what we believe the county is gonna be in the future. So why did we get started with University Lab Partners? And how do I get my picture off of this? <laughs> um, so um, University Lab Partners is really the culmination of our effort to get involved with the campus and encourage innovation and entrepreneurship generally. That, that um, initially when my dad retired from Rockwell, the company made a gift uh, to, the, to the UCI School of Art to create the Beale Center for Art and Technology, which is a collaboration between the engineering school and the uh, Fine Arts School. And it was a real uh, nod to my, both my mom, who's very into arts, and my dad, who's an engineer at heart. And it was a touching to them, and, and, and it, it spurred involvement by them into the, with the university philanthropically for many years that continues today. Um, there was a gift that was made to the business school to create the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship there, which was now uh, leading the charge to create the first uh, one-year master's program in the UC system, a master's in innovation and entrepreneurship. So not an MBA, but it's taught in the graduate school. And it's this, this September was the first incoming class. But while we were excited about how some of those initial activities were progressing, the itch we were really trying to scratch is how can we help UCI, which is doing roughly $400 million a year in, in research, how can we help translate that research? How, how can we help commercialize that? Fully understanding that there's a lot of research that's basic research, and that's great, and it, uh, the university system is the place for that. But there's also, in our minds, opportunities to commercialize or translate that research. And we thought one element that was key to that was to get the business community involved. The business community knows how to bring things to market, they know customer needs, they know how to build a business. And so even though we were very active at the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the business school, the business school is not really core to where the inventions are happening. They can be part of the team, but they're not the team. So we started to then look at how translation and commercialization happened at other schools around the country. We looked at Stanford, we looked at UCLA, we looked at Columbia, and uh, that, that effort resulted in the creation of UCI Applied Innovation. So I know the vice chancellor or the chancellor, vice chancellor of research, Promode, his predecessor was very involved in helping us look at these other schools. And what came out of that study was that rather than having the Office of Technology Alliances, I think was what it was previously known as, be buried kind of in the bowels of the vice chancellor of research's responsibilities, how do we elevate that? How do we make it into an entity that is not only serving the faculty and researchers and students on campus as customers, but also connecting with the business community in a way that makes it easier for them to understand what resources are on campus and vice versa. And so that led to the creation of Applied Innovation, as I mentioned, which st was stood up about five years ago. 
And it took an off, we, we made an office in UCI Research Park, just up California near the, inter, uh, the intersection of California and Bison. And it was there for an important reason. Rather than putting it in the center of campus or somewhere in an academic building, the, the idea was to put it off campus. Uh, UCI Research Park is technically off campus, although it's just across the street, and put it in a position where the business community can access it easily. I mean, back when they designed UCI into a circle, uh, kind of inward looking, some would say. Uh, you know, the 73 freeway didn't exist, the airport wasn't as big as it is, but now if you look at UCI from a business person's perspective, the front door of the university really is bison coming right in, coming right through UCI Research Park. Um, so that was where they put the first home for applied innovation, and that was five or six years ago. Richard Sudek is the executive director of applied innovation, and he manages all the intellectual property of the university. So when you go to him for contracts, industry-sponsored research contracts, uh, conflict of interest issues, any of those issues, they, they are um, managed from his office. Um, and that, and applied innovation grew and was really actively supported by the chancellor and the provost, and it was exciting to see it grow and get more involved. And it was, it was also put at that location co so it could serve the community as well, and its constituents, as well as the university and all of its customers. Because at the, at the core of what we believe, again, is that if the business community can get involved with what the university is doing in a way that's mutually beneficial to both, then one plus one can equal three. And so we started to support back in the, uh, about that time, we started to support some uh, faculty members at the School of Physical Sciences, Information Computer Science with just non-dilutive gifts, grants, saying, we sat down with Dean Jan in the School of Physical Sciences first, and we said, you know, we've been supporting you for years in a way because we, you know, my dad is such a, you know, <laughs> lover of the uh, physical sciences. And I asked my dad, why, what are they doing with the money that you're giving them? And he said, oh, I don't know. And I go, well, why are you giving them the money? What do, you, what do you want them to do? And he goes, well, I like to go to those breakfast series they have. <laughs> And I said, Dad, you can go to the breakfast series. For, I go, what would you like them to do with it? And he goes, well, I'd like to encourage faculty members or researchers who are doing something that has some potential for commercialization. And so six or seven years ago, we, we went to Dean Janda, who uh, uh, was at the School of Physical Science. We said, we're going to give you $60,000. Go out to the, your faculty members with an RFP. See what comes back. Well, three people put in an application for that. This was... And we said, well, okay, we don't want to make a decision. Let's split it three ways. And one of, the, one of the faculty members who received the grant was Greg Weiss from the School of Chemistry, and, um, or Department of Chemistry. And lo and behold, four or five years later, he started a company based on that research, a little offshoot of that research, which he said at the time was really important because sometimes research grants are written so specifically that you can't do some things that might be on the, on the cusp, on the edge. And he used that to, to do a little bit more research. And out came a company, and he called me. I'm in the real estate business. He said, well, Ken, I've got a problem. I, I got a knock on the door, and the Conflict of Interest Committee has visited me, and they say they want to know more what I'm doing with this you know, device over here, and how is that related to the research? And I've told them, well, it's a company that I'm trying to start. And they said, well, that's great, but you can't do it in your academic lab. And so he called me and said, well, how can, you know, is there a lab that I can find some space in? You're in the real estate business. Can you find it? And I said, I'm I'm sure I can. So I looked around and I realized you can't in Orange County. I mean, if you want to get small lab space, you're going to go to San Diego or you're going to go up to LA. And I thought that doesn't make any sense. And so we started to look and, and research what was out there. We went to J Labs down in San Diego. We went to Bio Labs in, in uh, LA. Well, now they're in LA, but they were also in San Diego. And we studied them. We tried to get other people to do it. We worked with some of the um, uh, Suzanne Sandemeyer at the School of Medicine was very helpful, and I said, just give me your worst building on campus, and I'll just give me a corner of it, like in the basement, 600 feet. Give me something started. And there was always a reason you couldn't do it. And so to fast forward to a year ago, applied innovation was growing. Industry-sponsored research has grown in the last three or four years from $12 million a year to $25 million a year. And I don't know why it can't grow to $100 million a year. Um, and so that, I think, in, energized the uh, administration to say, hey, we need to support this more. Um, Broadcom, who was the tenant in a million square feet of space at the end of California going up the hill, 
vacated and all of a sudden the Irvine company who owned those buildings had them all back, they were all vacant and Applied Innovation went to the school and said, we think we can do more for the community and more for the school if you can help let us, they were now in two different spaces, let us, let us come together and consolidate our space and expand it and we think we can do more. They got approval to do that. Richard Sudek, the director said, we also need a wet lab incubator because we've got all these projects and faculty members need a place where they can be close to their academic activities but still run over and do something that has some potential for translation. And the school said, we just can't do that. You know, we just, there's all these different demands you can imagine, so it didn't get funded. At the end of the day, we decided we were gonna fund it. We thought it was important. And so we have um, leased half of the third floor. So Applied Innovation is, a new, is in a new building that they're just moved into this week at 5270 California up the road. And they lease the, the they, UCI has basically leased the whole building except for our 17,000 feet. So we took a big bite, signed a 10 year lease and decided to try to develop a co-working space with wet labs. And so I think I might have a little bit of a video. Um, we've covered that. Uh, let me go, I'll come back to the this. And it's important, I guess, to note too, is the, the, the wet lab incubator, University Lab Par Partners is our name. We're an independent, we're independent from the university. We're a nonprofit, we're an activity of a, a foundation. And we're, um, we're one of the only ones we know of, frankly, around here. So our goal is to help accelerate commercialization activities. And also, as we got into it, we realized there's a really a, a great opportunity to create workforce development type activities, apprenticeship type activities. We, we met Sunil through um, his uh, the, uh, company, Translucence, and we learned more about the neuroscholars programs, which maybe some of you are involved in. And we thought, gosh, that's interesting. Um, you know, our business model is in a co-working, we've got 66 individual lab benches. We've got 11 private lab suites that are about 200 square feet. We've got 17 private offices. And then we've got 21 cubicle spaces. So we're pretty flexible and our business plan assumes we never get fully occupied because again, we're not here to lease space to translucence for the next five years. We're hoping they come for a year they work on their science, they work on their business proposition, they work on financing and finding partners, and then they move on and they make room for the next person. Or, you know, it doesn't move on. And we tell Sue Neal, you know, it's been great, we love you, but you need to go back to your academic lab now. And so we're always trying, and then, but we realized we've got space here, we've got equipment, um, and we're worried about Orange County. I mean, the most, we have a low unemployment here in Orange County, but if you look at the types of jobs that have been created over the last 10 years, they're not the kind of jobs that you, you wanna create. They're, I mean, there's nothing wrong with hospitality jobs and leisure jobs and food service jobs, but they don't, you know, they don't pay enough, frankly, for somebody to stay and live here. And so what if we could do some workforce training and make connections to the business community. Because if you asked Edwards Life Science or you asked Massimo who's making devices or diagnostic tools, what's your biggest challenge? Well, it's people. And so anyway, that's, that turned out to be not our first strategy, but, but evolved into our second is that we can work with people who have existing programs like NeuroScholars and figure out how we can complement those and maybe add on to them. Um, I'd like to show you a little video. I think it is. Here we go. I don't know how to start it. Um, maybe that'll go. Oh, there we go. Well, there's our. That's the floor plan. But we let's see if I keep going here. And so again, you can see there's three bays. So what we've done, we didn't know who our tenants were going to be. Uh, we didn't know if they were going to be more biological oriented or if they were going to be medical device oriented. Um, the first tenant we signed up was, was the previous uh, chief scientific officer at Edwards Life Science, the developer of the first transcatheter uh, heart valve that Edwards ended up buying his company 15 or 20 years ago. It's now a billion dollar business. He's left Edwards and he's taken four engineers with him and he's leased some space there. So we've made the right half, the right side of the lab we think it's more fabrication, 
We've got laser welders. We've got fluid advice. We've got stuff a real estate guy doesn't know what it is other than it's expensive. Um, and so we've kind of said that's going to be more of our fabrication side. In the middle, it can go either way. We, we're not sure. On the left, we've got a, a fume hood bay. We've got a, a microscopy room. We've got a freezer farm. We've got tissue culture rooms. And so we think, you know, biological more on that side. We'll see what happens. We've been really excited. Um, Chris Hughes from the School of Biological Sciences, Abe Lee from the School of uh, Biomedical Engineering, have a company that's developing tumors on a chip and vascularizing them and doing drug discovery work with them. They lease uh, L6 and L7 at the top. Those are our private lab suites. All this down here in purple, that's just in a general office area. So I think we work without all the drama. And, um, and just co-working space. So we're set up with, we're trying to take the friction out of commercializing. We're also trying, and the reason I'm so excited to get invited here today is we're, UCI to somebody on the outside is very opaque. I mean, just trying to sitting here and listening to these presentations, it's just intimidating for non-scientists. Now, but we know there's, as, a, as the community knows, there's an amazing resources on, on, on campus, but how do you access them? How do you, you know, and I can tell you from firsthand experience to get a recharge agreement signed, it can be complicated because that one is different than that one is different than that one. One of them says, talks about IP, the others don't. I mean, it is, you know, it, it is not like getting on your iPhone and saying, I agree, and off you go and you just pay your $70. So, we're here, Karen Cook is here in the audience somewhere. She's our ecosystem director and really is the, the, the boots on the ground as we start, and we're gonna open in December, by the way. But we're trying to learn more about the different re facilities on campus so that we can be that clearinghouse. When some, one of our tenants says, gosh, I, did you know anybody who can run a mouse model on a brain with a light scape, but like that first? <laughs> then we're gonna say, yes, we know where to go. In fact, we know who to call. We've, this is the agreement that they've already signed 100 times. Your insurance requirement that we made you sign for us is totally what they're, it's, it's aligned with theirs. So we're trying to take the friction out of that. We're trying to be, I mean, I say sometimes we want to be the concierge at the hotel. When you walk down in a big city you're not familiar with, and you say, where's the best place to have Chinese food? And they've got three options. And so if someone, if one of our residents says, do you know anybody who could help me with this? You know, we may not know exactly what this is, but we're going to find it and make it easy. And so that's our goal. Uh, we're excited, you know, we're doing this to really on honestly further the mission of UCI Applied Innovation. They are, uh, you know, a, a group of people that are dedicated to working with the business community and with all you faculty and, and researchers on campus to try to help make connections to not only just help you further along your research, but if there is the potential for commercialization to, to do that as well. So. Let's see, maybe the video can play. I think huh? just one more button press. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. So again, we're just in the, one of the old Broadcom headquarters, just right up the road. Got, uh, this is taken a couple weeks ago. We're going to, we're further along. We're going to be open in December 20th. So from a tenant standpoint, you've got conference rooms, reception areas, um, uh, pantries for, for food, um, centralized Wi-Fi, printing, all that stuff. This is one of the bigger bays that'll have probably, we have 66 standard six foot lab benches, snorkels and compressed air and different things, um, water. We spent a million two on equipment. So we've got you know, probably not exactly the right things because we don't know who our tenants are, but we've, we've done our best. We're applying for a, these are some of the facilities just outside, which is if you haven't been over there, it's really nice. There's a new restaurant that just opened up. All this is available for, for tenants. So if you join and you become a resident of University Lab Partners, you get a free gym membership too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll help the, uh, the creative juices. There it is. Um, and so it's really been great. The Irvine Company is a for-profit entity, obviously. Um, we signed a 10-year lease. I can tell you they've been extremely supportive of what, of what we're doing. Because I told them, I said, if you just stops here, then all we've done is we've pushed this problem a little further down the road. What we're hoping for is that we can prove out the model that there is demand from innovators and entrepreneurs and we can grow companies and grow jobs and grow value for our community 
and hopefully drive you know, more real estate needs for the Irvine company. I said, you need to step up and build a building that has 1,500 to 2,000 square foot individual labs so that you know, Sunil's successful company can grow and move down the road and we can bring in the next group. But anyway, I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any.